Let's now turn our attention to looking at a general framework for exploratory data analysis. What I mean by that is the following. Until now, we've been looking at specific data sets and we have carried out certain kinds of analyses for each of those data sets. Now, what happens when you're presented with something completely new? You're given a new data set. Are there any general guidelines that you can apply before you begin exploring that data set? That's exactly what we are going to discuss now. I will be looking at many kinds of questions that you can ask. Before jumping into each individual question, let me just give you a brief uh, look into the overall framework that we are going to talk. Okay, So these are all the things that we are going to be talking about. Obviously, I'm not going to go through each of these uh, on this particular slide. I just want to give this slide to you more as a way of uh, a handy reference guide. Okay, so this is not really a slide, this is really a handout. So I'm not going to talk about this any further. Uh, each of the bullet points here we'll be talking about as we go forward. Okay, so the first thing of course that we do whenever we get any data set is to get a basic summary. And we can use the summary function to get that summary. And we already understand what this basic summary provides us, right? It gives us for every column summary information. And the kind of information we get differs depending upon the kind of column. If it's a numeric column, then we get the typical uh, uh, six number summary, minimum, first quartile, median, mean, third quartile, maximum. That gives a good idea of the distribution of the uh, numeric variable. And if it's a, a, a factor, like uh, in fact, we don't have any factors here. If it's a factor, what you're going to get is uh, a breakup of how many values of each factor level are there in the data. And if it's a character, it's just going to give you the information that is shown above. This is a tool that provides a more fancy summary with a lot more information that you might try out. And that tool is called, is the package summary tools. So we say install.packages summary tools, library summary tools. And then after that, we use the function df summary, f up, uh, s uppercase and then you give the data frame for which you want a summary, you can try it out. Then you get a much more detailed summary with a lot more information. It's a little bit more useful than the default summary command. Let's quickly recall that when we talk about attributes of a data set, we talk about categorical attributes or factors and numerical attributes. Now, when it comes to talking about frameworks, we'll refer to categorical attributes as categories and the numerical attributes as measures. Okay, So these are the two things based on which we will be talking about the framework itself. Okay, So essentially, a data set consists of categories and measures. Categories are nothing but the categorical variables. Sometimes we don't just convert them to categorical variables. They may just remain as character columns. And because of the fact that dplyr and ggplot can both handle character columns almost as if they were factors, so we don't really need to worry about the distinction between factors and character variables. Okay, So we call them categories in any case. And then you've got measures, which are all the numerical numerical things. Okay, Let's see some examples of categories and measures. So categories would be things like customer. So for example, customer name or customer ID or order. So a particular order is a category. right? It's not a numeric thing. You've got an order and the order has certain date, etc., etc. But the order number itself is not a numeric thing. It's just a category. Similarly, time is also a category. And territory is a category. right? When we say time, we can say, you can say, what are the sales that happened in a particular day? So in that sense, time is a category. And of course, you've got territory, northeast, southwest, or whatever way an organization might uh, assign its territories, product. So, for example, we may talk about sales of a particular product or, uh, you know, profit from a particular product, all those kinds of things. So, these are all categories. These are not numeric variables, warehouse, etc. Okay. Measures are numeric variables, things like, of course, profit, units, the number of units sold, customer satisfaction, if you have measured it as a number, let's say, between 1, 0 and 5, late shipment, Okay, is also a measure in terms of how many late shipments have we done, revenue, of course, and expense. All of these are examples of measures, uh, provided we are measuring them in actual numeric terms. 
okay so the rest of the framework is going to talk in terms of categories and measures so when you hear categories think about factors or categorical variables when you hear measures think about numeric variables so as part of our framework first let's consider how we will analyze an individual variable of a data set right after all our data set contains many columns and we may want to analyze each column independently without talking about its relationship with other columns and of course what we do varies depending upon if the individual column is a category if it's a category of course what we look at is um, its distribution in terms of how many of the category occurs right so for example for each category we find out how many rows are there this is an example from our diamonds data set we are talking about how many diamonds followed each kind of cut right or we can look at the numbers here or the proportions here okay so that's what uh, is a basic analysis for category okay so we can identify the numbers of course the summary will give us the numbers uh, for each level of the variable but when you plot them in the form of a bar plot then it makes a little more sense and of course when we are plotting these as bar plots it's always a good idea to have the bars in a good order for measures the individual uh, the basic analysis would be to look at a histogram or uh, you know a bar plot things like that and again within a histogram you can look at the actual numbers on the y axis the counts or you can look at proportions on the y axis okay and as you know in a histogram what uh, the x axis has to be numeric variable that's the measure that you are looking at okay and of course looking at box plots looking at the basic summary also helps in terms of looking at uh, numeric variables or measures next we consider the case where we've got two categorical variables that we want to look at together so i'm just calling that as two category analysis obviously one thing you can do is to make a bar plot of one of the categorical variables so for example in this case this is from the diamonds data set this is a chart we've already studied and we've got the distribute the the number of diamonds for each level of cut that's what the main bar is showing but within that we can look at how many are of the other category in this case the other category happens to be clarity okay so what i'm trying to do is to take a specific example like what we did in the diamonds data set and elevating it to something general that we can do so for example if you have a data set that happens to have several at least some categorical variables more than one categorical variable then you might get some insight by analyzing the distribution of two of those categorical variables together right so look at one of them as the main bar plot and look at how each bar is uh, is built up by the numbers of the other category okay so once again you can look at raw numbers like this or within each of the first category you can look at the distribution of the other category in this case you understand the total is 1 and all we are doing is within each bar we are getting the proportion of the other category just to show you that this kind of thinking is applicable in general i show you an example from our mpg data frame which is also inbuilt into ggplot so here we are looking at the distribution of one category that is the main thing here and it's uh, how it is comprised of by the other category okay so this is something that you can do in general you've got a data set with more than two categorical variables take two of them at a time and do this kind of analysis and maybe one of those analysis will provide some interesting insights for you and in this case i've just shown you that sometimes it might be useful to flip the coordinates of a bar plot okay in general that might be a useful thing to do because what will happen is if you've got uh, especially if you if on the x axis you've got things which are uh, you know words which take up a lot of space then beyond a certain number of bars they'll start overlapping so flipping the coordinates will prevent that overlap okay so in this example they would have actually overlapped if i had the words on the x axis so i flip the coordinates once again i emphasize here that what we are looking for are general things that we can do with any data set right so we have done a lot of specific analyses now all i'm doing is just abstracting it out abstracting it out one more level so the next thing i'm going to look at is when you've got of course your data set will have at least one measure 
if it also has at least one category then you can do an analysis of for each category how much the measure contributes so for example in the diamonds case what I did was I took the the cut of the diamond as the category and I took the price as the measure okay so we've got a data set about of about 55,000 diamonds so we want to see and each diamond has a price so we want to see if you add up the price for each category then how do things look so that's what I mean by measure contribution by category okay of course the same concept may apply uh, we're making profits for every product so we want to see how much each product contributes to the overall profit things like that those kinds of analyses okay so product is your is your category there and profit is your measure right so take a category take a measure and if it makes sense see how much uh, each of the categories contributes to the accumulation of the measure right so you've got the overall profit of the company how much was contributed by each product or you've got the overall sales how much was contributed by each region any of those kinds of things will work so measure contribution by category is also a generic pattern that you can use in your data set of course not all combinations of categories and measures would make sense in the context of this kind of analysis but if you look at all the possibilities some of them will make sense and you could plot those okay again all we are doing here is We've, we are given a data set with which we are possibly not too familiar and what we want to do is to get familiarity with the data set by just exploring it and here what I'm giving you are several ideas by which you could just drive that process of exploration rather than completely starting with a blank canvas you now have a set of topics by which you can analyze so for example you can do an overall summary or you can do uh, analysis of measures or numerical variables by looking at their distribution histogram box plot right or you could take categorical variables and you could look you can look at how many of each category there are in the data set so that much for individual variable analysis then we started looking at two variables at a time so take two categories and see how the distribution looks together and now we are looking at combining a measure and a category okay so measure contribution by category I just showed you one example on the previous slide but it could be quite general so on the left you have all the measures on the right you have all the categories so we could look at for example profit and location so we can see how much each location contributes to the profit or you can look at revenue and customer what proportion of revenues did each customer bring in or you can look at late shipment and warehouse by late shipment we mean number of late, ship, late shipments well which warehouse was responsible for how many late shipments okay so almost you can connect any of them and then for example here expense order right so for example in certain scenarios processing an order could have additional expenses well how much did each order contribute to that expense so what this does is give you a general framework all you have to do is to put all your categories on one side put all your measures on the other side and then just take one category and one measure and see what kind of useful analysis you can do with that combination right so you can look at contribution in absolute terms or you can look at contribution in terms of proportion you can do many of these things again not all of these analyses will provide dramatically uh, refreshing insights but a few of them will provide interesting insights that you may not have known otherwise and then you can act upon it and explore the data further once again we are only exploring the data it's a very opportunistic process we try everything and see what we are able to uh, come up with